thanks for coming and joining me in the video. In the previous video, I showed you guys my method to building orchestral templates using the PLE. And one of the comments I got was asking if it was possible to create a PLE to enable disabled tracks inside a Cubase. And there is a couple of different ways you can actually do this. Now, first of all, if, if you want to enable or disable tracks, you don't need to build a PLE for it. I mean, you can select a track like this, right click and go to enable selected tracks or disable selected tracks. Um, if you want to select multiple tracks, you can click one. And let's say I want to select the legatos all the way down to the legatos here. I can hold shift and it will select all of the tracks in between. Another way you can do it is if you hold control and alternate, you can select multiple different tracks like so to enable or disable. And then there's a third way, but the third way only works correctly depending on the direction in which you select the tracks. I'm pretty sure in older versions of Cubase 9 and 10, I think it worked in two directions, which was quite useful. But then again, I might be wrong on that. So if you have an older version of Cubase and you're watching the video, just give it a try for me and see if it does work. And I'm not just going crazy. So with this uh, alternative way to select them, um, let's say I want to select these here and then I want to select a couple of these, but then I want to then carry on and select a bunch up here. So I would then now hold control and alternate to select these tracks. And if I want to select the rest of the brass, I would select this with control and alternate then hold shift and do that. That works. Now, if I do the same thing in the opposite direction, it doesn't really work. So if I uh, select those tracks here, select a couple here, and then let's go from the sustains all the way down to the trills by now holding shift. You can see it kind of bodges it up and you know forgets your selection. So I don't know why it only works in one direction. I'm pretty sure it used to work in two directions. Um, but there we go. Another way instead of right clicking is that you can come to your key commands uh, and also bind disable slash enable tracks to one of your keys. I have it on my stream deck, um, which just allows me to press a button uh, to activate a selection like so, which is pretty useful. Now, in terms of the PLE, you can make the selection more specific if you want it to. So let's say we want to create a PLE that only activates our two horn patches for the brass. First of all, we need to open up the PLE. And if you're on an older version of Cubase, then what we're about to do, you would have to once you've built this initial selection command, you would need to open up your key commands window and create a new macro. And the first input would be the key command we're about to create. Oh, sorry, the PLE command we're about to create, followed by the enable disable tracks function. And then you'd have to bind that to a keystroke. So first of all, um, what we want to do here is tell Cubase to target uh, the, these uh, two horns tracks. So to do this, we can go Oi, Cubase, I want you to look for a track with the name that contains horns2. And if it is disabled, so we're going to set the next input as property is set, is disabled. I want you to then, from the bottom here, change this to select it. So if we click apply, it should select those tracks for us. Okay. Now all we need to do is add in the post process command here, enable disable track, which is pretty easy to do. So we click on the plus sign and then just type out disabled and it will soon filter through the list and you'll see it like so. So now if we click apply, it's going to look for those tracks, select them. And then afterwards it's going to apply this post process command like so. And it will, there you go. It'll enable those tracks for us. And if we click it again, it will find them and disable them. Or will it? No, it won't. <laughs> because up here, we've told it to only look for the track um, if it's disabled. Okay. Now, if we want to have this working so we can always click this and it will turn them on and off, then what I would do just to make the command more specific is change that secondary uh, event filter target to uh, contain a, a media type is equal to MIDI. And um, because when you're using MIDI track, it's only going to be looking at instrument tracks and MIDI tracks. It just makes the command more specific. So now if we click this, 
you'll see that it's only going to target those tracks and enable them or disable them, okay? So that makes it more general purpose. Now it's always good to test your commands in a fully built template. So if you've got your main template open and you're building commands, always test them first because sometimes the behaviors um, of how these commands can work can cause issues. And then you need to figure out how to fix those issues by adjusting your PLE commands or maybe adding additional PLE commands to correct certain behaviors that may happen when executing them. It's very useful though, being able to do this, as you can see. Now we, we can do more specific as well. So we can say if the name contains horns two and the name also contains, uh, let's go for sustains, and click apply and see what happens. You'll see it's now only targeting the articulation, which is pretty useful, right? Now, if I remove the horns two section up here, and we say we only want to activate spiccatos in the project, then I would change it to that. And this will be a general purpose. This means all of your instruments in the project, if they've got the word spiccato in them, it's going to find them and activate them, but we only have the one here. So let's try this again with uh, legato. It might be a bit more favorable to work with. So anything that contains the word legato, find it, select it, and activate it. So there you go, that's, that's one we can do, one way we can do it. So hopefully you found this video interesting and get you working with the PLE. It's a very powerful tool. And the more you play around with it and experiment with it, the, the more useful it becomes, especially when you get ideas and see if you, there are ways that you can execute those ideas with commands. Um, it, does, it does save you a lot of time in the long run. So have, have a good play around with it and see if you can build some commands that help you with your workflow in your template. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in a different video.